and realistic when you look at the table and you look at the games that we got left and how many we need to win. I think we need a miracle, we need something uh, unique, a shock, because if no, I cannot see it coming. This is the story of Sunderland's greatest escape and arguably one of the greatest escapes in the whole of football. Miracles happen, Gus. This all took place in the Premier League 2013-14 season where already we were looking favourites to go down, obviously finishing 17th in the previous season 2012-13 and although our squad wasn't awful with players such as Stephen Fletcher, Fabio Barini, uh, Sessegnon, Sebastian Larson, Connor Wickham, players that were very crucial uh, and fan favourites such as Manoni, Catamol uh, and at the time, although definitely not anymore, the likes of Adam Johnson. After 15 games we were rock bottom having just 8 points and the team above us Crystal Palace having 13 points, already a big gap was forming and for the first 8 games of the season we went without a win until beating the Mags 2-1, obviously lifting spirits but of those many losses some hit a lot harder losing to the teams of Man United, Liverpool and Arsenal is one thing but being battered 3-0 and 4-0 to the likes of Swansea and West Brom is genuinely devastating and a lot of hope was lost. However, the next nine games proved to be very positive for Sunderland. We got 13 points in eight games, and then on match day 24, the biggest game of the season so far, we beat Newcastle 3-0 at St James's Park, with Barini scoring a penalty, and Adam Johnson and Jack Colback also getting on the score sheet. Two players Sunderland fans would like to forget, one arguably a lot worse than the other. But with this big win, hope was then instilled that seemed as easy a derby win as you could possibly have. Now, now that it's finished, I can tell you, um, it's, it's about performing, it's about doing the right things. Um, and now, lately, uh, everything is a little bit better, we can say. It. And, uh, you know, we are a difficult team to play against, especially away from home. Incredible, away from home. So, uh, the boys have been incredible. The players, they are convinced now, they, they know what we need to do, they, they like it, they are enjoying it. And when you play a derby, you know how important it is for the fans. But it definitely didn't last forever and we went back into that dreaded relegation zone where we thought our fate would be sealed. Let's take a short detour towards the focus of the Capital One Cup in which Sunderland were doing significantly better in that competition than they were in the league, obviously fighting for relegation. Now having beaten Southampton and Chelsea in the round of 16 and quarter finals, then going on and beating Man United with a late goal to equalise and a penalty shootout in the second leg, they seen themselves in the final of a league cup to be played on the 2nd of March where realistically Sunderland could be crowned victorious yet we would still be fighting for relegation and in another universe we could have won that cup and gone down so realistically a bittersweet ending but instead we obviously went on to lose this final 3-1 but many Sunderland fans weren't too bothered because the journey of getting at that final was as enjoyable as lifting the trophy beating Chelsea and United and then scoring in the first half and being up 1-0 against Manchester City. Many, many people cherish those memories, including myself to this day. I remember being in the Black Cats club and watching that final uh, and everybody going absolutely mental. And I, I, I don't remember how old I was, but it can't have been uh, much older than eight years old. Um, but I still remember it to this day and just something like that, a cup run really does lift spirits but then we still had to focus on the league and how next season we could be watching championship football and many people believe that would be the case. For the next few months Sunderland dropped in and out of the relegation zone but the real real low point where nobody thought we would ever get out of the situation came on April 7th 2014 where we went 1-0 up against Tottenham and ended up losing 5-1. Gus has later gone and looked on that situation and looked on that game and said that that for him was where he had lost hope, that for him was where he thought okay um, that's it. At that point we were 20th with six games remaining and of those six games were the likes of Manchester City, Chelsea, Man United, 
Cardiff, West Brom, all teams that we had lost to before in that season and some very big title contenders there. Sunderland's miracle run began with an away game at Manchester City who at this point were first in the table. Now it started very poorly with Fernandinho putting Manchester City 1-0 up but Connor Wickham scored a quick fire brace putting the Black Cats in front after the break. However, the excitement of being 2-1 up was then later crushed as Nasri found a late shot, but by no means was this a bad result and it was definitely a fighting chance that we needed, but we were still rock bottom with 33 games played. You said before the weekend's game, three wins and a draw might be enough. Where, where are they coming from? The is that the draw? <laughs> is that the draw? Yeah, it was the draw that nobody expected. I was saying just before, you know, it's too many people talk, talking rubbish, stupidity, you know, trying to make me resign and put me away from the team and they're just making things happen for no reason really. Here there is nothing apart from a football team trying their best, with a head coach trying his best and showing that when we play we are a more than decent team. The game that followed was arguably the hardest team to play at their home ground. It was Chelsea under Jose Mourinho, having not lost 78 games prior to this at Stamford Bridge. Now, initially, it was not looking good once again. Samuel Eto'o had given Chelsea the lead. However, the man of the hour, Connor Wickham, followed up Marcus Alonso's shot to equalise. Now, after several chances, Sunderland were given a penalty after Azbilicueta fouled no other than Josie Altador and Fabio Barini scored to end and break that home undefeated record that Jose Mourinho had held so highly and of course it was relegation battle Sunderland to do it but hope was still not fully re-given because Sunderland still sat in 20th place three points from the drop and having to still beat the likes of Man United, Cardiff and West Brom, it was still looking very bleak. For the match, I saw a flag, I presume you saw it as well hanging up, or maybe you did, that said miracles can happen. Not many people saw this result coming today. Well, apparently from the moment I said that we needed a miracle, uh, things changed for us. Um, you know, I think it's a way that the players, they, they keep believing. Sunday the 27th of April 2014, Sunderland play Cardiff at home with a packed stadium of light where Sunderland fans got to witness a miracle. Sunderland go on to win that game 4-0 against Cardiff City with no real doubt in anyone's mind. We absolutely dominated the side and obviously two of the goals had to come from the man of the hour, Connor Wickham. This man single-handedly kept Sunderland up, scoring in the most crucial of times, getting braces in multiple games. He was genuinely a legend and I love him for it. The fight for survival was not over with that game, however, we were sitting in 17th, one or two points clear of the relegation zone, but that realistically would not be enough with three games remaining, surely someone would catch us, but that soon changed when we versed Man United away from home. Obviously another very difficult game, but one man stood up and that man was Seb Larson with a 1-0 win, and that realistically sealed the miracle but the next game was when we knew for certain that we had survived and the Gus Poirier and Sunderland had performed what would be known as a miracle by definition. West Brom at home on the 7th of May we won 2-0 and that sealed the fate that Sunderland would finally after that very very difficult and strenuous year would have survived. We then later went on to lose to Swansea, but let's try and wipe that from recent history. That is the story of the 2013-14 miracle, and there is no other way to define such acts, because realistically the chance of survival was less than 1%, being rock bottom at Christmas, and somehow scraping our way to 14th, with no investment, with no real winter signings, just pure grit and passion. That's what being from Sunderland is all about and I'll leave you with a little message from Gus Poye. I came off the field against Everton a few weeks ago. If someone had said to you you were staying up and with a game to spare, what would you have said to them? 
I tried to say the other day in the press conference, I would say to you, if it was you, I would say you've been drinking heavily. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's football, it's miracles. I think that the word that we're going to use for this incredible escape, that it was a miracle, it was something unique, it was uh, something special. A connection on the pitch between the players in the last few games in an incredible way, connection with the fans every single game in an incredible way, and that is only one result, you know, winning football games.